In my hand here, I have a passe piece of technology. Not only has it been passe by its own company, but a new company that is about to go on Kickstarter right now. Tundra Tracker is basically a new product uh, made by a company that is actually experienced with the SteamVR Lighthouse technology and all the little stuff that comes with that. However, the product up until now has been very lightly seen, except from some prototype images. And of course, due to the fact that it's a Kickstarter, needs a little bit more explanation. The Kickstarter is about to go live pretty much right when this video goes live. So uh, yeah, here's the video for you. Just check around all the different timestamps for any questions you may have for the, about the product. And hopefully I will have the correct answer based on the public knowledge available for it. As a refresher, the Tundra Tractor is a replacement to this, which is the Vive Tracker. People buy three of these, usually to do full body tracking in programs such as VRChat and a few other apps. Anyone who's tried full body tracking has gotten pretty much addicted to it, and which is why that these companies are coming out of the blue to supply alternatives to this tracker. Vive themselves have even released a new version that is 15% smaller and lighter with more battery life. It's kind of weird how they release their product a week before this Kickstarter goes on, almost out of nowhere. For those who do not know about this product, one of the big things that the Tundra Tracker is pretty much showing off is these trackers, you buy three of them, and you need three different dongles to connect each one. So if you don't have many USB ports, well, <laughs> sucks for you. However, Tundra is also releasing a product that doesn't require the actual Tundra Tracker, but if you have trackers like these, you might like this product, and it's called the Super Wireless Dongle. They have SW3, SW5, SW7. The number indicates how many devices you connect to each dongle. So yes, you can literally plug in one dongle to your system to connect seven different SteamVR devices instead of having seven different SteamVR dongles, which is insanity. That's insanity. The dongles do support USB 2.0 and 3.0, uh, but it seems like the developers are very saying it shouldn't have much trouble. But uh, yeah, if you're not interested in the actual Tundra trackers, people that may already own Vive trackers or just want a little bit more room for their USB ports on their motherboard, uh, yeah, I think the trackers will be probably interesting for you. If you use a Valve Index, uh, your little frunk USB port, the dongles will be able to fit in that. The most fascinating thing uh, to know, and this was answered in a Q&A, is the dongles are actually, the firmware for the dongles were apparently provided by Valve. Which makes me wonder, was Valve at one point deciding to make their own of these? Or maybe they're for their own future products. They want to have more connections to uh, their SteamVR USB devices by themselves for their own products. But yeah, apparently these dongles that Tundra are going to be selling are using firmware provided by Valve. Which is weird. Why is HTC not doing a product like that? Of course, the dongles are almost $50 each. But again, the actual Vive dongles for years now have been almost $30 each, and they only included one device. And there was a lot of shortages for those dongles. If you're interested in getting the SW5 and SW7, apparently those will be the most limited in quantities to get from the Kickstarter if you're interested in getting those. The SW3 will probably be the most common to grab um, due to the fact that for some whatever reason, that's just what they're doing. It definitely seems to be a hardware thing, not a software thing, because clearly since they are uh, limited, the more greater value ones, clearly it's not just something that you can hack the firmware of one SW3 to get more dongles for. If you're using USB 2.0, apparently it's not impossible to connect two or more SW7 because you'll overload the USB 2.0 bus. Anyway, that's just the dongle. Um, let's actually talk about the main product, which is the Tundra Tracker. Let's talk about the price first. I feel the price of these trackers are very important um, to kind of keep in perspective. So for $300, you get one SW3 Super Dongle and three of the Tundra trackers. Uh, people are right now are probably already wondering, that's not very different than buying three of these trackers, which again, these are the old version. But I recently released the third version of these and they actually cost $100 more or so for a full three kit. So, but based on that, let's say you wanna buy these. Um, buy three of these, they're $100 each, that's $300. However, one thing that's uh, kind of nice to sort of value your money is these do come with straps of their own, even if they're very basic straps. Uh, when you buy three of these, you still have to buy straps. 
and these can range fifty dollars. These track strap plus with a battery are like a hundred dollars for a set of these straps. So yeah, it's kind of hard to say three hundred dollars for just the trackers is your full kit because you still need the straps. And these three hundred dollars include the super dongle, which is, in my opinion, probably very valuable for most people that are interested in this Kickstarter. And uh, of course, the straps that come with it. So I don't like this answer to a question, but uh, apparently Tundra believes that they are unsure when the actual product after the Kickstarter will go on sale. Like, let's say you missed the Kickstarter and you want to buy the product. Uh, they have no idea when that might happen, um, even if it will be released next year. They're just more worried about the actual parts sold for the Kickstarter buyers. Now, the Tundra trackers themselves are supposed to be 40% smaller than the uh, Vibe Tracker 2.0, not the 3.0, that's important. The 3.0 was advertised as, I believe, 15% smaller than the 2.0. So the Tundra trackers are smaller. Uh, they do this by actually bending the little board inside of their trackers. So it's like just like this, I guess you can kind of say. So they fit all their little motherboard and little electronics on that board inside the Tundra Tracker to get that size and shape. And apparently that also allows better battery life due to just the way that is. They're calling it the origami board, apparently, which is, I like that. Tundra themselves were questioned on the durability of the trackers and they basically said that the testing of the sample products are currently been done very well. They've been sending them to heavy users such as VR chat dancers, which if anyone knows anything about dancers using full body in VR chat, some of them are like insane. Like, how do bodies do what they do? So um, I'm doubting that they're going to break that easy. Um, and if they do break, it's like probably for dancing or doing stuff like kicking your foot against a wall and your Tundra Tracker <laughs> hits the wall. I'm imagining that's a good way to break your device. FOV, this is very important. So the Vibe Tracker 2.0 has 207 degrees, uh, which is a very large amount of tracking volume. The 3.0 has 240 degrees, and the Tundra Tracker has 220 degrees. As these devices get smaller, it's a lot more difficult to space out all the different lighthouse uh, sensors here to allow greater FOVs. However, just because the Tundra Tracker has the least amount of FOV does not mean you're gonna have any issues at an FOV of 220 degrees. That is still a lot, especially for just strapping it onto your feet or waist or knees, whatever you plan to do with it. So um, yeah, I was actually worried it was gonna be a lot less because when Vive uh, announced the 3.0 trackers, they said that you only need 180 degrees to have sufficient tracking for full body reasons. So when I heard that, I was like, oh, is Tundra gonna like have the bare minimum amount for that just to make, cause I was worried about the size. The size was the biggest thing for me. Cause I know as these devices get smaller, you can only have so much tracking FOV. Of course, this is uh, compatible with SteamVR just like the trackers are. You pair them the same way using the SteamVR runtime. Let's say that they release this product after Kickstarter, after the Kickstarter is done, they have apparently no idea if the price will go up or down if they do release the product out of Kickstarter. I'm sure they will eventually, but I think they're just more worried about getting the Kickstarter stuff resolved. They have no plans, or at least they don't know of any plans for a stretch goal. This is also interesting. Um, they may have to stop the Kickstarter after they reach a certain point of the investment deadline. So it's supposed to run for a month, but if they pretty much believe that they are not going to be able to fulfill more orders, like they have just way too much demand, they may close the Kickstarter early, which I hope they're just saying that as truthfulness and not try to make people feel rush to buy these products. Of course, you can use the Tundra trackers with a variety of mixture of things. You can use it with 5, 2.0, 3.0, um, even what's that one company that has like $300 per trackers, which is ridiculous. You can use it with any Steam VR based headset. So as long as you have the Lighthouse base stations, uh, you're good, which I hope that you knew that. I hope people didn't like assume that this product would work with just the Quest 2 and they didn't get to this point in the video, so they just bought them anyway. I don't think people would do that. They believe the minimum battery life for each uh, runtime will be seven hours, 
when a maximum of nine hours, I never trust what companies say about maximum. I always say the lower number. So seven hours. Um, these things say they have a maximum of four hours. And if anyone has used these products, they know the battery dies pretty fast, especially over time as you use them more. And people have to buy these um, these special track strap pluses that have their own battery inside just so you can actually last longer than maybe an hour or two as your battery in these things. It's so bad. However, the actual milliamp hour size is 850. This one here has 740. So basically the basically the uh, actual battery life seems to be revolving around the actual board um, in their low power state of the origami board or whatever. So it's not the actual battery size that's mattering. It's just the way they made the board. I'm still going to be plugging them in to um, these things when I get them because, yeah, I don't. I don't like charging stuff. I expect everyone to know this by now, but if not, it is a 2.0 uh, CBR Lighthouse product, which means it works with 1.0 and 2.0 base stations. So it does not matter which kind of base station you have. All Trender trackers also come with two base plates for straps and base plates for mounting for one quarter inch screws. So if you use a strap like this or want to use it on a camera mount for maybe mixed reality reasons, uh, yeah, you have that included, which is nice. There are different ways to mount these devices to different straps, including straps I imagine they're going to sell. Early backers and blah, blah, blah will get a carrying case and charging USB cable. Imagine not including a cable with a product. That sounds kind of crazy to me. But they're advertising that, so I guess that's the world we live in. Also, they seem to use USB-C ports to charge, so just like the US, uh, the Vive Trackers 3.0. Which again, sucks if you have these and plan to upgrade because these use freaking micro USB, so you'll need to buy a special cable. <sighs> VR is so expensive. One final small thing for those that probably are not interested, but I think it's just something to note. Uh, the manufacturing company they're using is called N7R. Of course, it's a Chinese company. Um, but looking at their website, they have, produ they have produced a lot of hardware for SteamVR tracking hardware developer kit. So this is not a random factory that has no idea what they're doing when they're uh, producing the little sensors inside of your products. They um, they are experienced. And again, Tundra themselves, they have released products in the past, um, including dongles for Vive trackers for when those were scarce. So this is not a company that is new to developing devices for SteamVR. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So that was a very long video. I am very sorry. Um, I don't tend to do these video long videos in, in general, unless they're weird gameplay videos, but I felt because this is a product that is being kickstarted, giving people the most information I could, um, since I don't have an actual review unit on hand is very important. Uh, Kickstarters constantly scam people. I know I am usually afraid of Kickstarters even for this one, which I believe will be a nice product and I will be purchasing for myself. Yeah, it's important to know everything you possibly can. So scouring the information and putting in a long video for the people that will use this video, I feel like I did my service to the community. So that's it. I don't care about anything else. Good luck.